Hi, Misha here, and this is my fourth episode looking at warships of the Imperial Japanese Navy. And today we're going to look at the Fuso class of battleships or dreadnoughts. And the next part we're going to look at the very closely related Issei class. And originally these four ships started off together, but they kind of diverged into two separate classes and going to do two videos. Now after the Russo-Japanese War, Japan felt it needed to have an adequate navy. It saw the value and its two rivals as it saw it were the United Kingdom and the USA. Of those it had good treaty and good relations with the United Kingdom so it pretty much figured its next one would be the USA at least to some extent. This is where the 8-8 ship plan comes from, which, which did it all the way back to 1907. It called for 8 modern battleships and 8 modern battle cruisers. The problem is, first HMS Dreadnought and then HMS Invincible changed this, meaning by 1910 they pretty much had to start all over. Now they did have the Kawachi class of battleship. There were two of those, but they were using the old 12-inch guns. They had many more than the old dreadnought or pre-dreadnought types, but still only 12-inch, and they were only 21, 22,000 ton. So they needed something bigger and more punchy. As with the Congo, they would start using the new 14-inch guns. In fact, a lot of the Fuso class bits and bobs are technology taken from the United Kingdom and the whole Congo program and just kind of upscaling it to be more of a battleship. But in 1910, 1911, the naval budget was pretty tight. While they wanted to do four at once, they only had funding from the Japanese diet, from the government, to do the four Congo battle cruisers and one battleship, which became Fuso. So she was laid down, and then as money became available, her sister ship here, Yamashiro, would be laid down. And Fuso would go into service towards the end of 1915, and Yamashiro would go into service at the beginning of 1917. That means they both pretty much missed any potential action in World War I. Although Fuso would serve as a flagship in 1917 and 1918. And it also would do some patrolling. Now the models here from Eagle Moss. We have Fuso circa 1944. And we have Yamashiro circa 1941. So not in their World War I guys, but good enough. These have six turrets total, each with two 14-inch guns, so a total of 12. Their secondary armament consists of six-inch guns. And Japan was fully aware and fully had access to British research on triple and even quad turrets. They considered it, but they went with double turrets because they wanted ships able to engage multiple targets, multiple enemies at once. These uh, were about 665 feet long originally with a crew of around 1200. Initially they wanted them to be able to go past 21 knots and they got that. They actually were capable of 23 knots as originally built. And honestly, when uh, Fuso was, was launched at the end of 1915, it was one of the most advanced warships in the world and potentially the most powerful warship in the world at that time. It was built to go up against uh, the American New York class, uh, and it did successfully. It, was, it outclassed the American ship, even outclassed most British ships of the time. But it was not without its flaws, which is actually where the Issei's come in. At any rate, 
Yamashiro would actually be kind of famous in Japan because it was the first Japanese warship to launch an aircraft in 1922. And then in 1923, both sister ships here would assist in the relief efforts for the Great Kanto Earthquake. And they would pretty much be in and out of reserve and doing patrols in the 1920s. Both would survive the Washington Naval Treaty. In fact, these would kind of become the backbone as older ships were scrapped out or turned into training ships. These would be kept on as battleships. And then they would be modernized in the 1930s. Now, Fuso here would actually be modernized in part from 1930 to 1933. Then she would be used as a flagship from 33 to 34. And then she would be put back in for modernization which would last on and off really until 1940. And when she was in, Yamashiro would have one big long modernization from 1930 to 1935. And so once Fuso went in, she would become flagship for a bit. And basically this was updating their armor, updating their guns to give them better range, better elevation, uh, updating their secondary batteries, going to the Pakoda mass style, and updating their engines and power plants and all that. Typical stuff. Originally these would be around 29,000 tons, but with the updates they would be 34,000 tons, so they put on some weight. They would also get aircraft catapults, and it would operate up to three float planes for reconnaissance duties. And these would be used briefly during the second Sino-Japanese War in the late 1930s, kind of as troop transports. But the thing is, on the eve of World War II, the Japanese weren't kidding themselves. These were outdated. The, the, honestly, as we'd come to find out, the concept of a battleship itself was outdated. But um, they knew that they weren't the most modern, even after the upgrades. So in 1941 and 1942 they really didn't do much, mostly acting as troop transports or patrolling the home waters. And they would sortie out and provide potential coverage for things like the Pearl Harbor attack and the Battle of Midway, but they would never engage the enemy. In 1943 it was actually supposed to be the Fuso ships that were going to get the aircraft carrier treatment. But that would eventually be the Issei here. So these would continue on as battleships in 1943. They would have their anti-aircraft armament beefed up throughout the years. They would be used as transport and training ships in 1943. And really they would only be used to engage the enemy in 1944 as Japan lost most of its carriers and started to lose its battleships. Especially after the defeat at uh, the Filipino Sea. And so these would pretty much go out, both be used at the large battle of Leyte Gulf in October of 1944. And both would be stationed at the extreme edge at the Battle of the Sergano Strait. And that would pretty much be where both would meet their end quite quickly. In fact, this was only the second time, at least in a major way, that battleships engaged each other. Fuso would be first to go under. She would get attacked initially by aircraft from the USS Enterprise. And then later hit by multiple torpedoes, two to three. And she would, most agree, break in two and then sink to the bottom with only around ten sailors surviving out of her large crew. When they updated these in the 1930s and as they added new things like radar and the planes and stuff, the crew climbed from 1,200 up to as much as 1,900. Anyway, I think at the time she had a crew of about 1,600, but yeah, only ten lived. So after Fuso went down... Yamashiro 
would sail on for a bit, and then at the edge of the strait, they would be jumped by an American task force of battleships, cruisers, and destroyers, and she would be pummeled by her, you know, 14-inch shells, just like her own guns, 16-inch shells, which completely outclassed her armor, and even quite a few 8-inch shells from uh, smaller ships. Again, this would kind of be the, the second and last true battleship engagement. And she would be set aflame, but actually would continue on uh, quite admirably in some ways, fighting and sailing. But then she would be hit by a torpedo, continue on some more, taking on water, starting to list. But then there would be a magazine explosion, and uh, she would soon capsize. And again, only about ten sailors would survive. So quite a huge loss of life over, over 3,000, 3,500 sailors. Thus ending, it when it was adopted, Japan's most modern battleship. And most people consider the Fuso-class Japan's first modern battleship in the super dreadnought vein. Certainly it was a dreadnought. But it did have some shortcomings and drawbacks. I'll talk more about those in the second uh, video, though. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward models. I've said other things, die-cast. The hull is all metal, the top is plastic. One is 1941, one is the other is 1944, so there's one that has a few differences. But I thought, why not have both uh, sister ships here since they're so closely related? By the way, when they updated these in the 1930s, the overall length was expanded out to about 690 feet, just through adding stuff and stretching the hull to try to get better speed. Which they did do. They actually got the top speed up to 24 and a half knots. So, not a fast battleship by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, fast enough for certain uses. And a very interesting design, nevertheless. Well, with that, I'll let you go. If you have any questions or comments, please do post them below. And if you could, as always, like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha. And I'll catch you very soon next time.